Hi, I'm Philip Thomas of Hot Rod Magazine, and we're here with our buddy Dale Snow and his comment to talk a little bit about the EFI system we built on it with Holly. Tested out the EFI setup. It runs great, it's dead consistent, it's dependable. We put a lot of road miles, it burned a lot of gallons. The next step is we're on this dual sync distributor. Yeah. So pretty cut and dry. The system goes on like any carburetor. I actually even use the same brackets. I actually didn't even have to change the position of the throttle cable. It literally slipped right on. We checked for throttle position. 100% came with a regulator that was um, uh, part of the system. It was actually uh, designed for the system, high pressure. There was a, a couple of wire changes, but for the most part, in the harness, they already had the connector for the dual sync distributor. And we tucked some stuff away. We hired, you know, in the back, we, we kind of tucked the harness back away and just run it the way it is. Put the 14 inch air cleaner on, person walks by, doesn't even know. Yeah, the only real giveaways are the wiring for the injectors and the throttle position sensor on this side. Sure. But even then we're able to tuck it up so that the drop base of the air cleaner covers it up entirely. Yeah. And the yeah. sheeting here looks very similar to the sheeting on the fuel lines. Um, and because this is just a fascia cover, you could, in theory, take this off, drill this out, put a, a proper AM plug in there, and, and really, really make this thing undercover. What we'll do is we'll put down the dyno first and see what the self-learning's done on its own homework. And we'll show you basically how much you can maximize this with the stock kit. So the tire manufacturers do not prefer you to run any kind of racing tire on a um, dyno roller because of the shape of it. So they prefer, if you have to do it, to run a radial tire. So we're here at West Tech Performance and we just started up the Comet and got it warmed up. So we're about to test our first dyno run. We'll kind of do it in stages to show you how good the system is out of the box, uh, how good it is with tuning just the base kit with just the throttle body, and then what you can gain with a little extra bit with the distributor. just got done with our first baseline run. So after a couple weeks of driving it on the street, this is what the Holly EFI learned on its own off of its base calibration. Saw a good number, saw that the map had actually done a pretty clean job on its own. We just got done with our second run here, and effectively what we've done is we bumped up timing to 32 degrees off the base 30. Right. And uh, and then just to play with feel a little bit, pulled out a little bit out on the top end, a little bit on the bottom end, and effectively just made the base map match the target ratio. Right. And so what did you see? Uh, initially, the one thing that stood out the most, Philip, was uh, the timing. In all the times prior to that, using the carburetor with the old MSD box, uh, the motor liked more timing. and. Uh, the dyno proved that with this combination now, uh, we were able to take timing out of it. Yeah, and what a lot of people don't realize is that the more efficient the combustion process is, the less timing you need. So uh, adding timing does not always equal horsepower.
just got done with our third run, and this time we learned with timing that adding two degrees didn't do anything, so we actually kind of came back, you know, like Goldilocks and the Three Bears, <laughs> came back to 28 degrees, a little bit under our base timing. Yeah. We increased the RPM limit. The motor continues to want to pull. So what we learned is that the self-learning gets you really close. Um, we effectively took his old carburetor fuel ratio, put it into the handheld, and the system did the rest for us. It got us within 10 horsepower of Ishmael's tuning here at West Tech, and uh, the fuel curve, the map itself, is actually pretty smooth and pretty drivable. Got it dialed in, and we learned a lot. One, don't be afraid of it. It is the same kind of tuning knowledge that you've got. Just apply it with a different type of tool, a keyboard instead of a screwdriver. Two, pay attention to the horsepower ratings that these kits have. Uh, we're making low 500, maybe mid 500 horsepower at the crank. The kit's rated for 600 horsepower and we're walking up to that limitation, which is excellent. We're within the range that they tell us we can be in and we're doing it with the base kit. You can get a bigger uh, throttle body with bigger injectors. You can get a bigger pump if you make more power. And three, get out there and do it. You'll never learn these things unless you try. And uh, what we've got out of this is a car that makes more power, drives and starts a whole lot easier and uh, gives our owner a lot more data and tools to tune with when he goes to the track, which is a win-win-win in my book.